Doodle bud. This is one of the most iconic fountain pens of all time. The Mont Blanc 149. Current retail price up here in Canada for this bad boy is $1,290. Over here, we have the Wingsung 630, which no doubt gets its styling cues from the Mont Blanc. Current retail price on this is about 219 Canadian dollars. The Wingsung is very similar in design and overall size. It features an ink window almost identical to that on the Mont Blanc. This has a piston filling mechanism made of brass to draw up the ink just the same as it is on the Mont Blanc 149. And I would say the most noteworthy part of the Mont Blanc is the number nine size gold nib that's on here. Well, guess what? The Wingsung has a very large gold nib as well. So for about one sixth the price, how good is this pen in comparison to the Mont Blanc 149? We're gonna go through that today. And to spot some of the differences, we're actually gonna to have to use magnification. Now, before we get started, I thought I would disclose, I purchased this Mont Blanc 149 myself, not new. I found this on an auction a number of years ago. This is a new old stock version from the late 80s. The cat band even says W Germany, in, which means West Germany. And I bought this for about 30% of what a new Mont Blanc 149 would go for. This Wingsung 630 was sent to me by a store on AliExpress. They go by 365 days stationary. I'll have a link down below. They wanted me to check this thing out, get my eyes on it, and hear my thoughts. Now, before we get microscopic, we will stay macroscopic. And as you can see here, this pen uh, took some styling cues, serious styling cues from the Mont Blanc. Now, they do have a version where the ends are more square to change the styling so it's not so much of a, of a copy if you don't like that type of thing. They do have some other options to make it look a little bit more unique. The clips here you can see are pretty close to each other, a little bit wider on here, where they meet and dimensionally are very, very close. Cap bands, there is a slight difference on here. This one, now this was a little bit interesting. It's Wing Sung, but on here it says Jun Lai. It's the 630 and this here, you can see here, says made in Shanghai. Neither pen is filled with ink. Let's check the weights. How close is that? We have 30.9 grams. I will ink these later versus 32 grams. A distinguishing feature with the Mont Blanc is it turns off in exactly one full rotation to reveal the nib. The Wingsung 630 turns off in about one and a quarter rotations. Lining up off the back here, the Wingsung is a little bit longer up into the grip section um, but when they finish off, they almost meet at the same point, a little bit longer here, about one and a half millimeters. Also, the nib on mine is ground down a little bit. I did that myself to give a unique writing experience. As I said, this features a number nine size gold nib. This one here is 18 karat. The Wingsung has a number eight size nib. This is 14 karat gold. This is also very unique. They do have a nib that has styling very similar to the Mont Blanc. But this particular one I was sent has this heartbeat slit that is cut into the nib. This is done with a little cutting disc and provides a very nice finish when it is cut. However, on this pen, we are going to go under the microscope. And I did observe a few flaws. But the way this was done, you can't do that with a cutting wheel. You have to use something called wire EDM, which is electrical discharge machining. The ink window on the Mont Blanc lets you see how much ink is left in your pen and as you turn the piston knob you will see the piston go through the window and that will draw up the ink. Now with the Wingsung, this particular version has a nearly the identical style of ink window but they also do have one that's just simply a, a clear section here. It doesn't have these lines in it, just a clear section so you can see the ink level and here you can see the piston as well. The grip section on the 149 is quite thick, running about 13 millimeters, and on the Wingsung 630, we're getting virtually the same dimensions as well. So what you've seen so far, they are very, very similar, and we're talking $220 versus almost $1,300. It's gotta be close enough. Let's get a little bit closer. The Mont Blanc is made from what is coined as precious resin. There is a little bit of a translation issue coming from German to English. But I can tell you from experience, it feels fantastic in the hand. It holds a very high degree of polish. Mine has been used daily for quite some time, so there are a little bit of scratches on it. It is a very nice material, and it has one thing where if you shine a light inside of it, even though this is black, 
it comes out red. I'm going to have to turn the lights off to show you that. Here's the endoscope going in, and we can see that turning red now as it goes through. The Wing Sung uses their own resin. It's not black, so there's no point in me doing that test, but if you shine a light in it, we can gain a little bit of perspective. You can start to see now a few little specks that come up on there, and I will get the microscope out for that. And also where the cap band goes in, we can see just from the construction, there are some regions where it's a little bit thicker and a little bit thinner. The lines on the Mont Blanc body are very smooth and almost seamless. We have these rings that are here and here. They fit perfectly into the body. You don't feel any steps. Everything is nice and smooth. The Wingsung 630 has those same parts and features, but the attention to detail isn't quite as great. You can see here how the cap doesn't sit just perfectly. We have a little bit of a gap there and you can feel those rings. It's not a perfectly smooth transition. If we go to the bottom, you can see the body line just changes a little bit. It dips in here just a touch and you can feel those rings. Now, is that worth the extra thousand dollars? That's up to you. If you see close up features like on the clip, the material is prepped and polished perfectly. You don't see really any surface imperfections, especially on that inside surface. If we compare that to the Wingsung 630, you can start to see those type of imperfections that still exist and they do come out when they are plated. If we're going to get into this, let's really get into this. First up at the top finial, of course, Mont Blanc has their emblem, which by the way, it is placed in there so good. You have to get magnification to see a seam. Underneath, this is a little detail. They put a metal insert because we do have a metal screw over here. To snug things down you don't want the plastic to crack and break here they got the brass screw and it is just going into the injection molded threads while i'm here also i'm thinking perhaps i can get this top cap to fit a little bit better uh, i won't do this now but i might just give this a quick little figure eight sanding on a flat surface just to make those parts a little bit better comparing the clips tells you a story of how you save a few dollars again <laughs> is it worth the extra thousand on the mont blanc here the polishing and preparing prior to plating and afterwards is superior as I showed a little earlier before. You can see some of that here. But this is essentially just stamped out and this is where you can really see the details. So on the Mont Blanc we have this little rounded end. I don't know if that is like brazed onto there but you can see it's connected quite nice. On this one you save a few dollars so this is all stamped out in one shot. We have these little cutouts here at the top and instead of having a ball what you do is you leave that attached and during the forming process this will get bent over to form that feature there is one little feature i think wing sung was a little bit smarter than mont blanc when you go to put the clip back on you'll put the screw the cap over top this can go wherever there's nothing that uh, gives an orientation on which direction however on the wing sung clip we got these little tabs cut out we have these notches here on the injection molded body. So you can put it one of two ways, most likely here in the front. Slips on there, and now it lines up every single time. Hmm. Looking down inside the wing sum cap, it's tough to see just with lighting and everything else as well, but there's that little, little cap liner that you see down in there that provides the seal. The Mont Blanc has that finer detail, that little ridge down there, which will go up against the section and seal that way. Both of these pens, by the way, seal wonderfully and I've had zero nib dry up issues. To dig deeper, we are now gonna to have to go into the inner workings of the pen. So I'm gonna pull out the nib and the feed. So here I'm just gonna grip on top. Now there is some markings here if we can get the right contrast, which is tricky. It looks like there's a special tool that will remove the whole entire nib unit, the Mont Blanc 149 has the same type of detail as well. There's a custom tool you need to uh, remove the nib. But on this one, you can just grip it top and bottom, little pinch, wiggle, wiggle, apply a little bit of pressure, and it comes out relatively easy. Here we have the feed of the Wing Song. It's made quite well. I haven't had any issues with ink starvation while writing with the pen. Now here is the nib, and it also features these cutouts the Mont Blanc 149 has as well. You might wonder, why is this cut out? Well, that's just to save a little bit of money. If you make thousands and thousands of these nibs and you just have a little bit less gold here, after all, this is going to be inside of the pen. It serves no purpose. If you get rid of that, that is a little bit of money saved on every single nib. So that feature is here as well. Now, flipping over to the back side is where I can see a little bit of the difference. The overall finish and polishing of the underside of the nib 
is not quite as high a quality on some premium pens like the 149 and other ones as well. This does not really impact how the pen writes or performs, but that is a cost-saving measure. Now for the cynic out there who figures, oh, it's just gold-plated, I will take my 8,000 grit micro mesh pad and I will polish the inside here. And if this is plated, it will remove the plating. If it's actual gold, this will polish it up a little bit. As you can see here, we did get a little bit of a better polish from doing that. So it's not plated, it is real 14 karat gold. And you can see some of the leftovers on the pad. Now I have never seen a nib with a slit cut like that. And so now it's gonna be time to bust out some magnification. It's not 200X, it's gonna be 20 times. And I wanna show you some of the finer details I noticed. Here's a look at the engraving on the nib. You can see that is done with a laser. And the rest of it here, this is stamped into it during production, which is great. We have AU 585, AU stands for gold, and 585 is 14 divided by 24, uh, which means 14 karat gold. Now we go up here to the nib slit, and this is where it starts to get interesting. So wire EDM can produce super fine detail and fantastic finishes, but you can see it's a little bit jagged in this one. So I think some of the settings they're using, whether it's the feed rate or some of the other settings during that process need to be refined a little bit further to clean that up. Now this doesn't impact ink flow. Actually, if anything, it might help a little bit because all those finer little details now act as fissures to actually draw ink uh, up towards them. So if anything, maybe even actually improves ink flow a little bit but it is a little bit of an eyesore. And as we exit out to the tip, you can see in the right before the, the slit at the very end, the tines do sort of bow out a little bit. So I think a little bit of adjustment needs to be done on that overall process. Now the tipping material is shaped differently. So this is the business end that hits the page. A standard nib tip will be essentially a round ball. This one has a bit of a wedge shape to it, a bit of a knife edge. And this does change the writing characteristics. It is smooth, but it provides greater feedback. And it also does provide some line variation. This is not the stock tipping on a Mont Blanc 149. I ground this myself specifically to give a unique writing characteristic. But I will compare them just so you can see in a writing sample coming up in a little bit. We're going to the back of the pen now, and I will take out the piston assembly. That can be done on the Mont Blanc, but there is a special tool that you need to do in order to remove it. You do not need to remove it. I would not recommend that whatsoever. Do not do that with your pen unless you absolutely need to because there's something wrong with it. Uh, with the wing sung, same thing. There's really no reason to take it apart, but I will take it apart to show you. To do that, I'm using my wrench off my Twisby pen. Now, this stock wrench will not fit the flats that's on there. So what I had to do was open up the wrench a little bit further. I smoothed and polished it out, just did that with a file. And now there's a couple flats. You fit that on there and you're going to go righty loosey in order to loosen off the piston assembly. A few turns is all you need. I think we're fully disengaged. There we go. And the whole piston assembly slides out and be sure do not lose this little trim ring and note the orientation. When you take it off, there is a little step on here you want that bore that where that's machined out a little bit, that step to go up against the very end so it seats nicely there. The main part of the piston is metal, so that's quite nice. Now, when I first got my pen, I played with it a little bit, and the piston knob wouldn't quite snug down all the way when, of course, when everything was assembled into the pen, and it would just sort of wiggle a little bit. I'm going to show on the screen there, it just had a little bit of a wiggle to it, it was sort of annoying. Uh, that doesn't happen on the Mont Blanc 149. I dealt with that for a week and then I thought, let me see if I can eliminate that and I was able to do that. How I did that, so if you have a pen, uh, if you you know were to get the same pen and you have that same issue, let me show you. First, here are the bits. So the piston rod goes into here and this is what's gonna drive the piston up and down. Uh, you can see we got a little bit of a rattle fit. I haven't taken out a Mont Blanc piston assembly but I'm guessing it's a little bit of a tighter tolerance and that was sort of the cause of the wiggle. So what you do is you place that into the body and what you're going to do first is put the piston knob on and just turn it about that much. That's about all you need. Instead of just placing it on, you put it on, just let it engage, slight little turn, and then we'll insert the piston, 
apply a little pressure here, hold it, and now we'll screw that piston down. All right, there we go. And now what it does, when you bottom it out in the pen, you're losing just a hair of travel, but only that much. You're essentially taking the slop out of the system. Um, when I took the piston assembly out first, this would be fully snug against the neck here, and there'd be just a touch of slop left in that piston knob. So that's what you need to do for that little adjustment. These are greased. Um, if you just do this quick adjustment, you might not need to re-grease it, uh, but it's not a bad idea to put just a drop of silicone grease on there um, before you slide it back in. Now to put it back in, just extend the piston a little bit, put on this trim rim, uh, ring, uh, trim ring, notice their orientation when you do it. We're gonna get our wrench back out put it on the flat. I like to sort of snug it down a little, keep everything in place, put it back into the body. I sort of do it this way so that way the trim ring there will sit nicely and we're not going to damage things. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. See, it's the wrong way. There we go. There we are. So now we're snugging things down and I will give it just a little turn with the wrench just to ensure it's fully seated. We can undo that knob and now we secure down the piston knob and it's nice and that wiggle is gone. We really didn't lose any incapacity whatsoever. We're still getting full travel as you can see in the piston knob. We essentially just took out the slop in those parts. So now onto the fun part. We're gonna ink these up and try them out. Now Mont Blanc will tell you, you should most definitely use Mont Blanc ink in Mont Blanc pens. We're not gonna do that. I'm gonna go with this ink. This is a Graphon Faber Castell Stone Gray. I don't like gray inks very often but this is my favorite gray ink. I recently picked this up at the local Vancouver pen shop and these are gorgeous bottles. Now, since we are thoroughly comparing the two pens, we might as well check the ink capacity. So let's see what the dry weight of the pen body is. We got 21.12, I'm gonna hit tear. We're gonna fill up the pen. Now, if you've never uh, filled up a piston fill fountain pen before, you just happen to see this video and you don't know why you're watching this, you're gonna see right now. You're gonna turn this piston knob all the way to the bottom of the travel, insert the pen into the ink, and then retract the piston, that will suck up ink. I like to do this one more time just for good practice to get all the air out, maximize your ink capacity, draw it up. Let's yeah. check the weight. And so we got about one and three quarter milliliters of ink capacity. Let's check that against the Mont Blanc 149. All right, we got 19.7. Let's see what we had. We had 1.75. Now we got a touch more, just a hair, 1.84. Just for good housekeeping, let out a few drops and then put the pen nib up, turn the piston knob all the way down, and that will just help to avoid any potential leakage. After all of that, is this Wingsung 630 as good as a $1,300 Mont Blanc fountain pen? Well, no, you saw all the details I ran through, but for the $1,000 saving plus, I think it's pretty darn good. Has a number eight size gold nib. By the way, the cheapest entry level new gold nib pen you can get, this is the vintage version, but a Pilot Elite or Pilot E95S, I think it's a fantastic pen. That is the lowest cost new gold nib pen you can get at this price this would be the second lowest cost gold nib pen you could get that's a brand new pen i think that's a big deal because it also has this big honka nib on it construction everything you saw is pretty darn good pretty reasonable the only thing that's not my favorite on here is just the way this particular nib point writes they do have the jf series so i'm curious how that writes but uh, yeah, I wish the grind was a little bit different on here. It's not that it's unpleasant, it's just different from your, your standard nib points and I think they should uh, leave the modification for the JF series. I am curious what a bo uh, broad or a medium nib would write like in comparison. So what I am gonna do is I'm going to try to convert 
how this writes into writing something like this. So I will do a follow-up video where I grind the nib on this one and show you how that's done and see if we can get this Wingsung 630 to also write almost identically to my Mont Blanc 149. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. I'd love to hear from you down there in the comments while you're at it. Hit subscribe. That way you won't miss the follow-up nib grind video. And I want to thank 365 Day Stationery for supplying this pen for review. So does the Wingsung 630 deserve to go in the same pen case as these high-end premium pens? I would say absolutely. Which, by the way, this clip, I think the springiness on this is spot on and is actually a little better than the Mont Blanc 149. It just slips in there perfectly. So it's going to go in the case and I'm going to continue to use it. That's it for now and we'll catch you next time.